Hey everyone, it's Sarah Olak Spiker here, and today I'm coming to you as a proud mama <laughs> because my little one has learned how to ride a bike. And uh, I want to share with you a backstory because it is so important and it brings a whole context around those of us who, in professional lives or personal lives, tend to be a little impatient with the process. And uh, like the description of the video says, we still try to negotiate with the universe, even though we say that we trust and surrender. So back in 2018, when the girls and I were in Slovenia, my older daughter was five going on six and um, she wanted to ride a bike, but my parents did not have any with the training wheels. So <laughs> the only way for her to go was to actually learn how to ride a bike. And my parents were really patient and over a couple of days, she got a hang of it. And uh, about a week or so later, we actually went on a biking trip to um, the Northwest part of Slovenia. And um, we biked dozens of miles, um, uh, winding, tiny, uh, you know, uh, biking paths, um, underneath the Alps, actually. It was a beautiful experience. So when we came back, she actually got her first bike as a uh, birthday present. It was a kid size mountain bike with uh, shift gears and she was really excited. She was really proud and uh, she was really showing it off um, in front of her cousins too, because you know, she was now a big girl knowing how to ride a bike. Her little sister um, was just as eager, but she was like, yeah, no, I'm not five yet. I'm not interested, remotely interested in learning how to do it. So they're like, okay, great, you know, she's still gonna get there. So we tried the next year. Nope, not interested. We tried the following year. Nope, not interested. So what ultimately happened was that um, our older daughter outgrew that uh, f mountain bike that she got, so she got upgraded to a bigger bike. And we figured, well, this little one is going to be perfect for our uh, youngest daughter to learn how to ride a bike on. It's perfect size, it's going to be awesome, she'll be motivated. Well, by the time <laughs> she actually turned six, she outgrew the thing because it turns out she, you know, compared to where her sister was, who already is way taller for her age, um, she was even taller at that age, so the bike didn't fit. And uh, we're like, well, are we getting a new bike? Is she even interested in uh, learning? And she's like, yeah, yeah, no, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm not so sure. Well, the other day we ran to Target for a quick um, shopping that was supposed to be, you know, one of those going in getting two things getting out well we got another thing which was another bike for her that she absolutely fell in love with tried it on it was perfect size we brought it home she sat on it it was like a few minutes that afternoon and maybe a half an hour the next day done she learned how to ride a bike so it really reminded me um that yeah you know she is a person who just does her own thing on her own timing and cannot be pushed, cannot be uh, much less bullied into anything, not that we would attempt to do so. Um, but we simply had to honor her process and uh, her way of getting ready to be ready, which then reminded me of another conversation I recently had with a girlfriend of mine soul sister of mine and uh, we were talking about process of growing process of evolution and how um, you know when we go through dark night of the soul and we're finally recovering at one moment I'm pretty sure all of us have been there when it's one of those decisions that we make when after get making the routine of feeling tired or irritated or sad or whatever it is, you wake up one morning and it's like, this is it. I'm tired of being tired. I'm changing um, the way I'm perceiving everything. I'm changing the way I'm thinking. I'm surrounding myself with experts. I'm being um, 
I'm immersing myself in training with mentors, whatever it is, right? Um, and we make this decision. The funny thing is that when my friend was recounting her experience over six or so years, when seemingly nothing changed, I felt how frustrated she was and how she almost started to judge herself of her incompetence and failure to make things happen and how she seemingly wasted years of her life because just recently things really shifted for her and she could feel the whole different energy not just you know the mental space when you force yourself through the motion and then consequently you you have a good day but this is like a profound shift that she experienced and she could feel it and finally celebrate it so it really got me thinking of not only uh, the bike riding process with my daughter when you know somebody would say that we wasted two years because she should have being you know parentheses um, in quotation marks she should have learned how to do that years ago while she was getting ready to be ready and then it happened like that right same with this client and I have been through the same experience too when I was looking back on my own life um, especially period of time after burnout and postpartum depression you know it felt many times for many years that nothing is working that nothing is shifting that nothing is moving and I was growing impatient with myself I was grow growing frustrated with the process and of course <laughs> when we do that it, it's actually counterintuitive and it works against us too anyway um, but I then had to remind myself there's a lot of flies out here sorry um, that even though we might expect there's actually two things I want to two things yeah first one even though we might want to expect this cinematic kind of um, reveal of the new life when we finally decide for it to happen with the fanfari and fireworks and red carpet and the whole nine yards it doesn't happen that way and oftentimes this decision is just the initial step we still have to make the next step and the next step and the next step and sometimes it's not the quantum leap it really is incremental process and this incremental process whether it's our personal development or business growth or revenue growth oftentimes gets really dismissed because it's not that much right but here's the thing even if we course correct by one degree 100 miles down the road that one degree makes a huge difference or one percent in incremental increase what one percent is today and then tomorrow one percent of that additional one percent and then the next day and the next day it starts to snowball and of course eventually when we realize like whoa where did all this come from we just never notice it and that's the second part noticing we are so conditioned to measure either success or progress by some vain metrics that oftentimes have nothing to do with what we believe in, with what we stand for, with what matters to us. So no wonder it's so hard to see any progress when we are measuring the wrong thing, when we are focusing on the wrong thing. Now that being said, right, the same thing that I shared with my friend on the phone um, and the same thing that I had experienced for myself and it's pretty much the same <coughs> that uh, most of my clients have been through um, even though we might be focusing on this one particular aspect when we turn around and we look backwards on this journey whether it's a week or a year or ten years right so much changes in so many different ways I shared openly in the past how over the years I was so focused obsessed borderline obsessed with one particular metric 
and it was reaching a very particular monetary goal reach you know set so high that i knew i was gonna self-sabotage but it was just my self safety mechanism to set the goal so high that i knew i was gonna fail because then it kept me in the story of yeah see you knew you suck you're whatever right um but all these years while i was so focused on this particular metric i did not notice that so much has shifted around me and you know when i first started my business in 2011 i set out to create freedom and flexibility very buzzwords these days but that was the top of my priority list freedom and flexibility <sighs> ever since that moment that has been my priority freedom and flexibility the problem was I already had freedom and flexibility. They were there all along. I just did not notice because the lens that I was looking through was tainted. And I was convincing myself that as long as I can reach that particular goal, then I could experience that flexibility and freedom, right? Um, I did not realize how my relationship with my husband has shifted and changed profoundly. I did not realize how I evolved as a parent. I did not realize how much I have developed gifts and skills as a healer, as an alchemist, as um, a mystique over those years because I was not focused on those. I was obsessing over whole different metrics and I would do so much to try to stack everything in my favor to build the stepping stones to get to there, but it just wouldn't change. Um, but where I'm standing now is like, oh, wow. Just like with my client. Wow, look, we did it every single thing you were working for every single thing i was working for it's here it's done um it simply requires a shift in perspective a shift in perception um sometimes it requires us to elevate ourselves and remove ourselves from the actual picture so we can see the frame um sometimes it requires us to actually <laughs> get off the clouds and let our feet touch the ground a little bit. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you that growth, evolution, um, whether it's personal development or professional development, as much as we would like to um, determine what is the acceptable time frame in within which it sh needs to happen or how is it supposed to look like, um, there's just so much more that goes in it, but the more that we can um, notice and bring this awareness, the faster things will evolve. That said, when we set the intention and yet completely detach from the outcome, that is the thing that actually moves things along but as long as we are focused on well it's not here yet it's not here yet it's not here yet see i knew it i'm incompetent uh what was i thinking i'm not enough and oh, i need to hold myself back because i'm gonna be too much and worrying what other people are gonna think worrying about failing worrying about succeeding worrying about burning out and running out of steam running out of energy <laughs> running out of time running out of resources i mean the list of fears and resistances it can be 10 pages if you want it if you want to focus on all the reasons why you can't or couldn't or shouldn't hey there, you're gonna find them that being said when we are really serious about the surrendering into the flow we're not negotiating with the universe anymore because that's this knowing and trusting and just being this version of ourselves and being in this frequency when things just start to unlock. And again, it's not gonna be the red carpet and the fanfare and the <laughs> glitter bombs or fireworks or confetti. 
<laughs> it might be a very subtle arrival, but the art is in noticing when that happens and celebrating when that happens and acknowledging when that happens because only then we can proceed to the next step in this evolution. And last but not least, what I want to leave you with is, you know, just like my daughter, it might have taken her two extra years to learn how to ride a bike, but once she was ready, it happened within hours. Um, trying to force things does not gonna, is not going to speed up your time. But when you're in the flow and when you're ready to receive it, when you're ready to embrace it, when you have the capacity to hold it, to move it, um, the time will be removed out of the equation. It's not even gonna matter anymore. You won't even realize like, bam, it's done. You're doing it, you're having it, you're celebrating it, it's flowing to you. So that's a message for you for today. And um, I hope you found in this message exactly what you've been looking for. Sending you love.